You know, the world of English is a fun and exciting place to be. I'm so glad you could join me for another lesson. Hi everybody, this is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. In today's lesson, we will be taking a close look at the five natural abilities that many of us have, which help us to safely carry out tasks and live our daily lives without coming to harm. Some of us have all of these abilities while others do not. In this lesson, we are going to talk about our senses. To see, to touch, to hear, to feel, helps me connect with what is real to taste, to smell, oh what sweet bliss, those five great senses I'd surely miss. The word sense relates to the connection between the individual and the world around them. The senses of the body help to make this happen. There are five senses in all. Sight, which relates to seeing. Hearing, which relates to the processing of sound. Taste, which helps to determine the flavour of something in the mouth. Touch, which gives us a physical connection with the things around us. And finally, smell, which provides us with the ability to detect odour. These are the five senses that help us all to make sense of this crazy world. Of all the senses that we have, it would be fair to say that sight would be the most important. The ability to see allows us to connect with the world around us. We are able to experience light and colour. We can fully appreciate shape and texture. And most importantly of all, we are able to survive this sometimes hostile and dangerous world of ours. The eye is the organ we use to see. The mechanism of the eye is very similar to that used in a camera. You have a hole that lets in light, a lens to focus the image, and a sensitive surface that the light is focused onto. Almost all animals have two eyes. This allows each creature to not only see, but to also have better depth perception. Two eyes allow you to tell how far away something is, which is very useful in the wild. Closing one eye will reduce your ability to move around safely. Humans see better during the day, while some animals have better vision after dark, as they only come out at night. They are nocturnal. There are some idioms relating to sight. See the light. To realise or suddenly understand something that previously you could not. Go in with your eyes wide open. To do something with a clear understanding of what is involved. An eye opener. 
an event or situation that gets your attention by shocking or surprising you. Out of sight, out of mind. This negative expression means that you only think or care about a person when you are actually with them. A sight for sore eyes. This idiom means that something looks unattractive or unpleasant or not as it should. The word hindsight relates to thinking about a past event. In your mind you go back over something from the past and consider it carefully. A poke in the eye for someone. This idiom relates to a person being insulted or offended by something. If you are offended or insulted then it hurts just like being poked in the eye. You have probably noticed that my sense of sight is not as good as it should be. My eyesight is bad. We can use the words good and bad to describe the condition of any of our senses. My eyesight is very bad. So bad in fact that I must wear spectacles or glasses to correct or put my poor eyesight right. My glasses help me to see things clearly so they are not blurred. I am short-sighted which means that I can only see near objects clearly. Distant objects appear blurry and unclear. There is an operation that you can have now to correct your eyesight but I will not have it done. I like wearing glasses as they have become a part of both my appearance and character. They say that people who wear glasses look intelligent and clever. What do you think? Hearing is a wonderful sense. With it we can communicate easily. We can enjoy all the sounds of nature. The sound of birdsong or ocean waves crashing on the rocks. We can enjoy music with all of its variations of melody and rhythm. We often link sight and sound together when describing something. We don't just hear sounds, we remember them. They live on in the memory, just as the things we see do. The sense of hearing is often classed as being as important as sight, in that it is perceived as being crucial for survival. In the wild, the sense of hearing allows animals to detect approaching predators easily. Of course, the ability to hear also allows animals to find their live food more easily. Some animals have a very good or keen sense of hearing. There are even some animals that rely more on their hearing than their sight. The human ear is made up of three separate parts. The outer ear, which consists of the visible part on the outside, and the entrance, and the eardrum, which is a piece of skin covering the whole. The eardrum is what begins the process of hearing a sound. Then there is the middle ear, which contains three tiny bones that help to amplify the sound. There is also a canal called the eustachian tube 
which connects the inner ear to the back of your throat. This helps to control the pressure in the middle ear. This is what you feel popping when you are high up in an aeroplane. Then there is the inner ear. This is where the sound is finally processed and transmitted to the brain through a part of the ear called the cochlea. Despite its simple appearance on the outside, the ear is a very complex part of the body. The human ear is not as sensitive to noise as other animals, but it can still detect many frequencies of sound. Some people have very acute or sharp hearing. This means that they are good at hearing distant or high-pitched sounds. As we grow older, our hearing diminishes. A large proportion of people will partially lose or lose their hearing completely in old age. Did you know that besides processing sound, your ears provide another useful purpose? The inner part of your ear allows you to keep your balance. The part of your inner ear called the semicircular canals are tiny tubes filled with liquid that help you to tell which way up you are. This important part of the ear helps you to stand up straight and keep your balance. They even help you to walk upright without falling over. There are some other ways of expressing the word sense. We talk about a person's sense of humour or sense of fashion. In these phrases, we are talking about whether a person is able to find something funny. He or she has a good sense of humour. Fashion sense refers to a person's choice of clothing or fashion in general. Then there is sense of adventure. If a person has a sense of adventure, then we know that they enjoy trying something different from the usual. They are adventurous. Perhaps they enjoy traveling to unusual far off places. They have a sense of adventure. The sense of taste is one that is often misunderstood. The actual sense itself is designed for survival in the wild. It allows creatures to distinguish between what can be eaten and what should be avoided. The organ of taste is the tongue. It is covered in lots of tiny buds that are able to chemically determine the taste of something. Your tongue is very sensitive to things that are sweet sour, salty, bitter and savoury. Besides your tongue, there are also taste sensitive areas in other parts of the mouth as well. Just like the other senses, taste is there to help you survive. In the wild, 
the sense of taste allows animals to tell the difference between the sweet energy giving food and the harmful or poisonous substances that tend to be bitter and unpleasant. In humans, the sense of taste allows us to enjoy food, but to fully appreciate the flavour, we need another sense. Which one is it? I will tell you very soon. The word taste has more than one definition. As a noun, it names the sense of actual taste. It can also be used as a verb to show that something is being tasted. We can use taste informally to mean try and experience. Taste can also refer to your appearance and lifestyle, or more precisely, your choice of clothing or the things you own. We can say that a person has good taste or bad taste. For example, wearing a blue shirt might be seen as good taste, while wearing a pink one might be seen as bad taste. In this form, taste simply means liking or choice. There are idioms and phrases related to taste. To give someone a taste of their own medicine means that you do to someone something they have been doing to you. For example, a person has treated you badly, so you behave the same way towards them. You give them a taste of their own medicine. A taste of things to come. This phrase expresses a prediction of something bad happening in the future, based on a negative event in the present. The severe weather conditions we are experiencing now are just a taste of things to come. Can you remember what this is? Yes, it's a kissing gate. Sadly, I'm all alone today. There's nobody with me to give me a kiss. Poor Mr. Duncan. Where would we be without our sense of smell? Well, I would not be able to appreciate the sweet scent of this lilac tree for a start. In the wild, the sense of smell is a very useful thing to have. Animals with a keen or good sense of smell can easily detect their enemies by sensing their scent or odor, sometimes over very long distances. The human sense of smell is not as sensitive as it is in other animals, but it is still a very useful sense as it plays an important role in the sense of taste, or more precisely, when we are enjoying the flavour of something. In fact, without smell, we would not be able to enjoy the food we eat as much as we do. Without smell, there would be no flavour for us to enjoy. There are many ways of expressing smell. To <laughs> sniff something means that you are concentrating on the odour or scent of one thing. When you have a cold or fever, you might <sniffs> sniff because your nose is producing sticky mucus. Ugh. You can take a whiff of something. The word whiff can be used as a verb or noun you can take a whiff or detect one. A slight odour or a really bad smell 
can both be described as a whiff. A bad smell can also be called a stink, a pong, a reek, and a stench. There are a few idioms connected to the sense of smell. I smell a rat. This means that you feel that something is not what it seems. You are suspicious of someone or something. Something stinks here. This also means that you feel distrust towards something. You come out smelling of roses. This idiom means that you have escaped unharmed from a bad situation when others did not. To do better than other people in a situation. Create a stink. To cause a fuss or create trouble over something. If you complain loudly, then you create a stink. Oh, you know, I really hate my nose sometimes. Normally, it gives me pleasure with beautiful smells of food cooking in the kitchen. But during the summer, my nose causes me a lot of anxiety. The pollen from the trees, the grass and the flowers all go up my nose and it makes me sneeze. I suffer from hay fever and I get it every single year. The sense of touch is probably the most vivid of all the senses we have, as it allows us to make physical contact with the world around us. We not only see something, but we can also touch it. You can touch the rough bark of a tree and feel the tough, rugged surface. You can stroke a furry animal and feel its soft, smooth coat. Touch allows us to connect physically with nature and nature to connect with us. You can feel the gentle breeze as you walk and the warm sunlight on your face. Of course, it is not all pleasant. Touch also means that we can feel pain. <laughs> The word touch can be used in more than one way. We can use touch to mean contact in a non-physical way. You get in touch with someone. This means that you contact them. You can lose touch with someone. This means that you do not contact them anymore. You have lost contact with them. There is a phrase, touch base, which is often used in business to mean catch up or talk about what is happening. We will meet up tomorrow for lunch so we can touch base. Then there is out of touch, which means that a person has little knowledge of current trends and modern innovations. They are behind the times. They are out of touch.
almost the entire surface of the human body is sensitive to touch. Some parts are more sensitive than others. For example, the soles of your feet and the lobes of your ears are very sensitive to touch. Pain is something we can feel on both the outside and inside. Another type of pain is ache. An ache is the unpleasant feeling you get when your muscles feel tired. After walking, you might feel an ache in your legs. Sometimes in the morning, you might wake up with an aching back. As we get older, we tend to suffer more from those annoying aches and pains. Of course, the sense of touch can also bring lots of pleasure. Sadly, we have no time to talk about that today. Now that's a strange thing to find in the countryside. A deflated novelty balloon. Perhaps some squirrels were throwing a birthday party. <laughs> There are some people who believe that we have a sixth sense. Yes, a sixth sense. The concept of the sixth sense is that we are able to perceive things that are not related to the other five senses. This particular sense is one that puts us in touch with those things that we humans do not fully understand. Some people believe that we have the ability to interact with the dead or see into the future. Other people believe that the notion of a sixth sense is a human way of coming to terms with things like not having control over one's destiny or the fear of death. There is a phrase in English that uses the word sense. Your sense of direction. Sense of direction means your ability to know where you are going in relation to other things. Sense of direction also means that you know exactly where you are and where you are going. Now, which way should I go? I think I will go that way. Not everyone possesses the full five senses. There are some people who are born without at least one of them. Sight, hearing and touch being the most common ones. The lack of sight is called blindness. A person is blind. They cannot see at all. The lack of hearing is called deafness. The person is deaf. They cannot hear at all. The sense of touch is often lost due to an injury of some sort. Blindness and deafness are both classed as disabilities. A person who cannot sense touch may also be unable to move their limbs. They may be paralysed. They have paralysis. 
As we grow older, our senses become less keen. Some senses fade quicker than others. Some people only have parts of their senses. The word partial describes this occurrence. If you are partially deaf, then your hearing still exists, but it is not very good. The same can be said about partial sight. We often take our five senses for granted. We rarely stop to consider how lucky we are to have them all. Imagine not being able to see or hear. Think about how much you would miss being able to do them. We often refer to the main senses as gifts. The gift of sight or the gift of hearing. It is only after you lose one of them that you realise just how precious they really are. Here is a great place to give those five senses a good workout. Surrounded by beautiful flowering wild garlic. What a beautiful sight. The air around me, full of the aroma of the forest's pollinating plant life. What a glorious smell. The various species of birds singing in the trees above me. What a wonderful sound. The garlic leaves with their strong flavour. What an incredible taste. The rugged surface of the living, oxygen-giving tree. I can reach out my hand and literally touch nature. Our senses help us to not only perceive the world around us, but more importantly, they allow us to learn more about it. I hope you have enjoyed the sights, sounds, textures, tastes and smells of today's lesson and that you will join me again for another one very soon. This is Mr Duncan in England saying thank you for watching me teaching you. See you all again soon and of course, ta-ta for now.